Hey church, I hope you're doing well. Have you ever been stuck? Okay, uh, don't stop the video. I, I know this is how I started exact same way uh, last week, but this is a new message. Look, a different t-shirt. If you missed last week's, there's probably a link, you know, to the channel down, down there somewhere. Click on that, check it out. I thought, you know, God used me to give some fairly solid advice. When, when we get stuck, we're to humble ourselves, to take that path that can be difficult and, and recognize that we don't have it all figured out, to seek God and to trust that he'll hear us, answer us, that he'll heal our land. It was pretty good, I thought. And so I thought, you know, we talked about that topic. Let's move on. I, I would share some other message this week. Here it is this week. And I'm talking about being stuck again. You see, what happened was this week, earlier, on Thursday, I got stuck again. Not on the Ranger. I learned my lesson there. This time I was in, in our car. Uh, Krista and I had gone on a little date in the afternoon. We went for a picnic to play some disc, disc golf at a state park. We, we were spending a couple hours together, and then we were to be home, you know, when Silas got home with his mammy. That was our plan. So we drive out there. We get our food. Krista's setting up the picnic table. And, and all of a sudden, as I'm getting things out of the back of the car, I hear this little, like, whisper. Psst. And I think, huh. You know, we're on a date. Krista wants to tell me how I look cute in my disc golf clothes or something. Psst. I listened some more. Krista was, you know, by the picnic table. I was by myself at the car. It wasn't her. I listened a bit more. Psst. It's the tire. Losing air at a rapid rate. And so I, I go and investigate and I find the hole and, and I play this little game. Psst, 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 psst. It, it was kind of fun for like a half second. And then I think, man, the air's coming out of this thing quick. I have no plugs. I'm going to have a pretty good flat really quickly. We talk about this situation. We decide the, the best course of action is to eat I don't do well uh, when I'm hungry and hot and dealing with this type of thing. So eat first and then do the tire before we play disc golf. Just in case it takes longer than, you know, 20 minutes. We want to have it taken care of in, in case it takes longer than we've allotted for this time together. So we eat and we have a nice lunch and we're talking and we're sitting in the shade and then I go to change the the flat I go to take it off and put the spare on I get the tire iron out of the back of the car I go over to it and I give it everything that I have well not quite but I give it a good amount nothing it doesn't budge I try again this time I give it some more it still doesn't budge I try another lug nut I try every one with everything I have in it even trying to jump on the tire iron to see if I could crack them loose. Maybe not the wisest decision. It didn't work anyway. All five are just stuck on there. And I think, here I am, again. I'm stuck. And I need help. So we do a modified, you know, walk of shame. It, it wasn't so bad. I, I knew I needed assistance. This was beyond my control. We walk through the park and I'm looking for every truck that we can possibly find. We're scouring the parking lots hoping to find the guy with, you know, some tools in the back, a heftier tire iron or, or a piece of pipe I can put on mine to get some more leverage. Some of those guys got that big toolbox on the back of a diesel truck. They must have Fritos in that thing. Not a tool to be found from anyone. I'm flagging down people and nobody has anything. Finally, this guy comes by and he has a tire iron, a four-way one in, in his truck. And he says, you know, you can try this. It's a little heftier. See what you can do. 
I grab the tire iron, everything I have in me, it doesn't budge. The guy's a little younger, a little fitter than me. He said, let me, let me see that. He puts everything he has into it. He gets one free. He tries the other four. They don't budge. He looks at me and kind of laughs and says, well, good luck, buddy. I'm going to go eat dinner with my son and my dad here. When I'm done, I'll come back for the tire iron. I hope you have some luck. See if you can get those things off. Nah, not a chance. In the meantime, you know, I've taken other steps of humility. I've, I've gone through the phone list. Hey, we're here in Blairsville. Can you help? Hey, I, I, my tire iron's not working. I, I need some assistance. No luck. Finally, I do the ultimate humble thing. I call roadside assistance. Say I need help changing a spare. Can you come? We'll be right with you, sir. It's a little bit of a high volume. Let us get back to you. Long story short, they could send a tow truck the next morning or in the middle of the night. Or in the afternoon. Some help. Eventually, you know, my mother-in-law, she gets home with Silas. I call them and I tell, I walk Silas through the, the shed and I tell them how to get the big pipe and where Pappy's tire iron is. And, and they come and they bring it and I put the pipe on the tire iron and I give it my all. And it takes a while, but I get, I get three more of the lug nuts loosened. Four out of five. On the fifth one. I'm trying, and I'm trying, and I'm trying, and, and it's been hard on all the other ones, and, and eventually I get to the spot where I've bent my tire iron, and I bent my father-in-law's. Sorry about that, Boyd. We'll look for another one. I was still stuck. After I sought help from all kinds of people, in all kinds of ways, I was still there with a flat tire and no way to get that lug nut off other than to wait till the next day for it to be towed. Eventually I admitted that I had one more option. There was one more tool that I might try and, and we went home and, and Krista and, and, and my mother-in-law, they, they went home with me and I said, thanks so much for the help. I need to just try one more thing Silas, you can come with me. We'll get some ice cream afterwards. We'll, we'll see if this last thing works. We go home. We get this last tool, the, the breaker bar and the socket that my father-in-law has. And we bring it back, put it on with the pipe, and we get it off. All in all, you know, we got stuck around 3 o'clock. Around 10 o'clock at night, I get home again. Over a flat tire. I was stuck. Seven hours. It was miserable. And I was thinking about that and I thought, you know, God, I, I just talked about being stuck on Sunday. I didn't need to be stuck again this week. I learned the lesson. I know what to do. I humbled myself. I sought assistance. I trusted that you would hear. Why am I stuck again? Why did this happen so close to the last one? Again and again. You know, really those things were not that big of a deal. I, my attitude was fine. It was kind of funny. We were at a park. I enjoyed the picnic table. It, it all worked out okay. I mean, I got the car to the tire place the next day with the help of my father-in-law. The guy at the tire place took off the four tires that were going bad. He put on four new ones. I got new tires, a little less money, a lot less money, and life is good. But why did that happen right after it happened already? These were little things. But in our life, this happens in serious ways, too. 
We're feeling down and out and stuck and we're giving God all we have and we're, we're coming before the Lord in humility and we're saying, Lord, we need help. We need help. We're stuck in this situation and we don't know what to do and, and our only hope is that you would intervene. We need you, God. And sometimes right then is when something else happens. We're out of the frying pan into the fire. We get stuck again and again and again, and it's all compacted into this little time frame. It's like the hits just keep coming and coming and coming. What do we do then? How do we proceed? How do we keep going when it's one thing after another? You know, I feel like the advice from before still remains. We're still to humble ourselves, to seek God, to trust that the Lord will hear and answer. And we're to keep going, to persevere, to fight the good fight, as it says in Scripture. But when we're in these times, I, I'm often reminded of Paul. I'm reminded of what Paul says in 2 Corinthians. This is chapter 11, uh, verses 24 to 30. Listen to what Paul said. Five times I received from the Jews the 40 lashes minus one. Wasn't that nice of them? Cut off one of those lashes. I just lash them 39 times instead of 40. There's more significance to that number, but we'll, we'll move on. Three times I was beaten with rods, once I was stoned, three times I was shipwrecked, I spent a night and a day in the open sea. I have been constantly on the move. I have been in danger from rivers, in danger from bandits, in danger from my own countrymen, in danger from Gentiles, in danger in the city, in danger in the country, in danger at sea, and in danger from false brothers. I have labored and toiled, and I have often gone without sleep. I have known hunger and thirst, and have gone without food. I have been cold and naked. Besides everything else, I face the daily pressure of my concern for all the churches. Who is weak, and I do not feel weak? Who is led into sin, and I do not inwardly burn? If I must boast, I will boast of the things that show my weakness." Paul's talking to the Corinthians, and this man had an amazing life. He started churches all over the place. He met Jesus on the road who changed him, who made him into the man that he was. He was an apostle of the Lord, and he's saying, if I will boast, I'm not going to boast in my strength. I'm not going to boast in those things that I've done well. You know what I'm going to boast in? my weaknesses, those areas where God has shown up through me, those times when I've been shipwrecked and beaten and, and at the end, that's what I'm pointing to, the ways that Jesus has shown up in my life. Later in uh, chapter 12, he's talking about, um, you know, being tormented with this one particular difficulty, a thorn in his flesh that he doesn't describe completely. And he says in verse 8, you know, three times I pleaded from the Lord, take it away from me. I'm stuck here, God. God, I, I, would you take this thing away? I've had all of this happen and I need your help here. Take this thorn out of my flesh. Work to get me unstuck. You know, I, if I was writing a story, after the third time, I would do the third time's a charm. Jesus pulled the thorn out. Paul's rest of his life, smooth sailing. No more issues. You know what happens in verse 9? Nothing like that. Jesus said this to Paul. My grace is sufficient for you. My grace is enough. For my power 
is made perfect in weakness. That's a rough lesson. If you're relying on yourself and you're wanting a life of comfort and ease and you're all you're really wanting is for God to fix your problems and take away your weaknesses and make you strong and make things comfortable and easy. If you don't ever want to be stuck again and you're hoping that God will will alleviate every problem that you might face in the future. God doesn't say that that's what's going to happen. What he says is, my grace is sufficient. My power is made perfect in weakness. When we're stuck, we need to know that God's grace is enough. That he will bring us through whatever hardship we face even when they pile up on each other. And that somehow his power is made perfect in our weakness. It's a lesson that I'm trying to learn. I'm trying to see God's power through my weakness. I'm trying to trust the Lord when I'm stuck. To be more like Christ. To know that his grace is sufficient. God has given us so much in his son. He's poured out his love for us. His grace is enough. When the rubber meets the road. When the tire goes flat. When the life goes off course. And we find ourselves in a place that we never expected. In a situation that we cannot remove ourselves from when we're stuck. May we then see Christ. May we recognize his glory. May we know his hope. And may we learn to be like Paul. To boast in our weakness. To trust Christ. Even when life is all flip turned upside down for his sake and glory. Amen.